Hey, haven't you been wanting to start a podcast? Yeah, but doesn't it take a lot to make one? Well, let me tell you about Anchor. It's free, and it's the easiest way to make a podcast. On top of that, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Oh, that sounds amazing. But doesn't it take a lot of work to put your my podcast on different platforms? Actually, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. That sounds fantastic. On top of that, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. So it's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So where do I get started? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And welcome back to... Re- no, that's the wrong show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been doing a lot oh, of Oh, Lord. <laughs> I'll keep that in. <laughs> and uh, once again, we're here for another episode of the Convoluted Podcast. It's your host, Jesus, a.k.a. Tyrant Dominus. Uh, here to bring you another show, an episode. Uh, I've been just putting content out. <laughs> I was about to go into reaction cast status. Uh, but no, yeah, this is the convoluted podcast. Uh, with me today, uh, once as always, is Liz. I cannot hear Liz at all. As we wait for her to respond, we are here with also with Dalton. Yay, technical difficulties. <laughs> Uh, it was working all good until we started. <laughs> What'd you, know what? you break? You know <laughs> Alright, let's go backwards. Let's go backwards a little bit here. Fuck it. Leave it all in. Fuck it. My name is Jeff. Yep, there you go. Uh, here you go, editor. Have some work. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's weird. Why is this happening? Everybody hear me now? Uh, yeah. Yes. No. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. I'll just have to figure that stuff out later. Sorry, guys. It's fine. It's nothing's perfect. You know how it is. Mm-hmm. Except mm-hmm. for me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Show off. Okay. Um. Then it's already recording, so it should be fine. Anything going from here? Going forward. All right, let's try that again. Take two. Two. All right, ready, everyone? We're going to do a clap sync in three seconds. Give me... Why did I close all my articles? Because you're dumb. Probably. Okay. All right, ready? We're going to, in the at the end of three, we're going to clap, right? Three, two, one. And welcome back to another episode of the Convoluted Podcast. It's your host, Jesus, a.k.a. Tyrant Dominus. Uh, here to, again to bring you another episode uh, with me today, as always, is Liz. Hey, hey, hey. I haven't been here for the last two episodes, so that's my bad. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been a while. Uh, it's and been a while. Actually, <laughs> but actually, who's been here for the last two episodes is, uh, once again, Dalton. Wait, I have? Oh my god, holy shit. I have no life. <laughs> uh, like I said, these things are uh, recorded roughly every two, well, one or two weeks, so it's, yeah, they come that, out. That means nothing to me. I have no concept of time anymore. None of us do. Um, so yeah, how's everyone been? It's been, a, it's been a while. It's been a while. I can't stop oh. playing Hades. Somebody needs to take this game away from me. It's too good. <laughs> They made the char- you know what the problem is they made the characters too hot that's what it is. Uh, oh, is that it? It's yep. one of those games. It is one of those games. There's a there's a it's a game where one it's uh visually appealing, two the the gameplay is actually pretty good, uh two oh no three, uh the the story is actually pretty good too. Like it's a lot of and uh, four the music story. there's a lot there's a lot of good things about the Hades. Um, so, and there's a lot of replayability, so that just, that game just, is like in the top 10 of everyone's list from last year, uh, so I can, I can see why, 
You're not a PC gamer. Oh wait, is it, it's in more than PC, isn't it? I think it's also on. Yeah, it's also on Switch, I believe. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah. Somebody oh, ports the a... Switch. I haven't even got to play it in a while. <laughs> The Big real, ga- the real gamer in the in the family. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, how have you been? I've been all right. I've been traveling, as you know. Ooh, so. a traveler, huh? You've actually gone into the wild west of the the seas of coronavirus and the people out there. How you know? How I am vaccinated, been? and they even the CDC has lessened it up. And I went to personal things. I went to personal events. Uh, my uncle turned eighty in Florida, so woo woo. And I went to Universal, tried Hagrid's new ride. Woo, woo, that was awesome. Even the littlest one, my little girl, I loved it. Even which is amazing. Hey, that then... question. Uh, how are how are those kind of like huge theme slash amusement parks running at after over a year after the pandemic? How how went your time there? How was it? I had Ooh. well, our tickets had to be scheduled. Um, they allow only so much, so many people. Um. We were able to go to all three parks, but we only went to two. And um, they're pretty spaced out. Um, of course, unless you're like my brother who was running up against another person who was running up against another person. And I was like, okay, they do have a mark. You should probably abide by them. <laughs> we did. My uh, cousins who went with me who actually worked for Universal were, were nice enough to give us tickets, had a book of tickets in advance. And so it was pretty cool. It was, they were it was really well put together, I think. Um, if they're able to main a little bit of compa- you know, shorten the capacity of how many people were in there and I think it was pretty nice. It was a good day. We did a lot of rides. Well, not a whole lot, but we did plenty that I felt sufficient for the time there. Okay, cool. That's amazing. That's uh it's one of those things like we're hoping that uh, things will normalize, and it thinks little by little, it seems like things are normalizing. That's good to hear. Yeah, that's nice. And I mean, we Oregon alone is moving towards uh, vaccinating people um, age eighteen and over. We're just we are getting there, y'all. We are getting there slowly but surely. So, I actually was just in Seattle this past weekend, so that was a different offspring from Florida. <laughs> Really? They were very it was really weird. They were more strict about their rules. It was like I don't know. It was weird. It was very Bruh. weird. Okay. It was it was lax it was somewhat lax in Florida, like they didn't give a care and then you go into Washington they were so uptight. It was like, Oh boy. <laughs> it's well, it's that... an interesting insight. That's well, for that's, sure. <laughs> that's Florida for you, you know. They've been um setting they've been They've been kind of the butt of the joke. Um, talking about Florida, actually, that's a good segue into one of our Miami first shut stories. down for spring break. <laughs> that too. There. Oh my God, so much happened. Um, but where Segway, is that? Segway, beep beep. There you go. Segway time. You know. <laughs> so, um, going. Where is the Florida story? Do you have it? Uh, which one? <laughs> the the marijuana one. Ah, yes. Zit teacher. It should be at the very bottom one of your little thing. Yeah, I, had, I had a bunch of tabs open, but it, I accidentally closed it. Professionalism, you guys. Professionalism. Uh, what? <laughs> Is that exists? <laughs> uh, Not yeah, for me. Probably in the the right court system. <laughs> but not not ours. Don't touch me there. <laughs> okay um so looking at that one so let's see here so the let's see here open um so this is what basically what's happening <clears throat> school board fires a florida teacher for a medical marijuana use that's the that's our uh, so let's see here. Uh, a Florida uh, teacher has been fired for use of medical marijuana. Uh, Florida Today reports that the uh, Brevard uh, County School Board voted three to two on Tuesday to terminate uh, Allison Enright from her position at the Space Coast Junior Senior High School. Uh, the medical marijuana is legal in Florida. Okay. 
the federal regulations continue to categorize cannabis as a scheduled wait, scheduled one controlled substance like heroin, LSD, and ecstasy. Actually, I did not know that. I did not know that, actually. Yeah, Florida is a little behind on the times. It's a... The whole uh, marijuana being illegal federally is a whole... You could probably make a whole podcast just talking about the reason why it's still a controlled one substance. Really? Okay. I did not. I, yeah, I the, the, the government that. kind of wrapped themselves up in a nice little bow as to the fact that they technically can't really get out of it. Uh, uh, I think it's oh. it's stupid. It's you know, it's, it's far better uh... than opioids. I'm just saying. <laughs> True. Um, it is weird uh, seeing that uh, because I, I just don't understand it. Mostly it's like I understand. I, no, I don't. It's just so weird. Like it's still, it's technically legal. I, I, I'm, so why? It's, Go for it. So I think the reason she was fired was simply because like the media loves to do, they probably didn't give like all the information that they could have. They probably I agree. It does state that the uh, school board general council stated that they are drug free, especially because they do receive money from the government. And so there's probably something buried inside their ha- employee handbook and whatnot that says, hey, even though it's medically illegal, don't fucking do it. Uh, that's because, stupid. you know, federal government's. Uh, Real yeah, fun place to work it. for. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, speaking of federal government, um, my brother went to the DMV to try and get us to see where we're at on our our plates and our um everything for our, our car that we've been. Wait, waiting you're still doing that? Uh-huh. <laughs> like, wait. And and the what the lady said to my brother is, "Oh, we're just getting around to it now, even though they've cast a check since November." Yeah. Uh, April is just right around the corner. Mm, okay. Sure. Yeah, that, that sounds like the DMV. That sounds yeah. about right. It's the government. <laughs> they can get away with check getting cash in your check way in advance before they even give you your product. If it yeah. was a small business, you'd be screwed. Yeah. Damn, that's that sucks. Actually, my 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 brother right now. Uh, is having issues with the DMV at the moment. Uh, about at this point, about a, a week or a week, uh, two weeks ago, uh, during a, a job, him and uh, my brother-in-law were doing, they they got <laughs> they got robbed. Oh, that's and, uh, that that's one yeah. way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay, <clears throat> give me one second. For anyone listening, uh, let's see here. Uh, during the during these events, um, apparently they um, they left the keys in the truck, and they have like this excavator on the truck. And uh, boy, did whoever was trying to steal this entire system like took everything. Like I know I wouldn't be able to steal a truck hooked up to a trailer with an excavator on top of it. That's too fucking dangerous. They had to be pros. <laughs> Yeah, oh, they probably God. have done it before. I laughed so hard whenever uh, uh, Michael told me that. <laughs> Bruh. That was the funniest thing I've ever heard about just walking away from your company vehicle, coming back outside, and it just not being there. That's awesome. Yeah, but what ended up happening is he, he left his wallet in the thing with his in his coat and stuff. So he had he has to get a replacement now, and just this morning he spent like a good two hours playing phone tag and getting a bunch of uh, different switches with different DMVs, trying to just get his driver's license back. Uh, and yeah, so fun times for him. The DMV guys, the DMV. What a great place! I don't even know when my license expires. I think mine expires uh, in two years. Oh, mine, mine expires in like four years. I'm good. <laughs> I don't have to think about it ever. 
All right. It's every so, eight years, uh, right, here in Oregon? I think so. I believe so, yes. Yes. I don't even know how often it is here in Texas. I don't have a fucking clue. <laughs> Arizona's for life, dude. We should be going to get Arizona licenses and for life. <laughs> They don't expire for like 50 or plus years. <laughs> okay, you guys. Okay. Uh, let's continue on with some of the crazy stories of these past few weeks. So, this one's a big one. So. Uh, Is there a reason you're eating your mic right now? <laughs> yeah, no. I know. <laughs> Hungry there? Okay. Oh, yeah. Nope. Father arrested after alleged carrying toddler into San Diego Sioux elephant exhibit, dropping child during escape. Yeah. So for those of you um, who couldn't understand him, what he said was, father arrested <laughs> after allegedly carrying toddler into San Diego Zoo elephant exhibit, dropping child during escape. Oh, I think man. the most impressive part about that is i've been to the san diego zoo and that's a fucking drop and that is i have been there too so that is crazy <laughs> for the it two-year-old just... to have escaped that is amazing it is baffling to know that like, what what is a parent thinking one go, getting into an enclosement for a photo and then two running away from cops and leaving your child no, uh, no. So the police told the newspaper that the man wanted to take a photo with the African bull elephant. Yeah, the thing's charging you. Bye bye, life. Yep. You know what? Friday it's afternoon at the zoo in Balboa Park, when two guests, despite multiple barriers, purposely and illegally trespassed into a habitat which is home to our Asian and African elephants. Well, we'll know where we'll see him in the future. Yeah, he's <laughs> I, he's not escaping that. No, he he's fucked. That that child's going into the system if the mother's not around. That kid's fucked. I feel yeah. sorry for the kid. Yeah, they're two. They don't remember it. They'll be fine. Yeah, but foster care is not a great place for a lot of kids. So, bro. <laughs> All right. Um, remember, kids, to... don't eat your children into the zoo. <laughs> all right um continuing some of these weird like uh, he's gonna end up that's gonna be a weird case in the courts but you know there's some weird court cases throughout the the world uh apparently a french court says marital sex duty in quotes why puts case to echr yeah so what what ended up happening was uh a Let's see here. Uh, a woman has lodged a legal appeal with the European Court of Human Rights, the ECH, ECHR, uh, after there. the yeah after French courts ruled that she had violated her marital duties by not having sex with her husband. So originally, <laughs> so originally the French courts, uh, uh, went uh. Uh, shoot, what's the wording? Uh, agreed on the husband's side, uh, that her her duty for marital marital sex was fuck. Why can't I think think words? Come to me, words. Come on. And look at that shit. <laughs> because Sad. she wouldn't fuck her husband, she is solely responsible for the divorce. It really is one of the number one reasons why a lot of Besides communication, sex, you know. That's what a divorce is, right? Uh, but, I mean, I th he missed out on the best part. The woman is 66 years old. That's true. So, continuing on with the story. In 2019, <laughs> Betty White is, what, 99? Is she still having fucking sex? Okay, well, Betty White's a different case. She's an immortal god. <laughs> Just like no. the queen. My name is Jeff. Yep. All right. Uh, but yeah, that's it's just baffling. And like, what? How the the French court system like said, yeah, yeah, your 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 husband's right. You know, you should you should be having sex. Uh, because then, like, it just it becomes a standard at that point. 
if you well uh, i don't know actually you know if we have any i don't think we have any french listeners i wish we did if we do have french listeners i would like to know a little bit more <laughs> because usually when when in the u.s whenever like a uh a case kind of sends a bent a benchmark that's kind of what people look before and it, so if it would have been passed in the u.s like oh yeah in this case you know so and so uh happened so i, I kind of wanted to know how the french uh government handled that but it seems like it wouldn't matter because it went to the next level of the european court of human rights uh but yeah it's it's just fucking crazy yeah it is definitely apparently it's a super old french law that involves with the marriage and stuff like that and that's what the whole fight is trying to appeal the law and get it removed because it's archaic uh, makes sense. And um, quote, denied women the right to consent or not to sexual relations. Huh. Interesting. I wonder. Wait. How old, does it say how old that is? Because I. It just says uh, that it's a archaic ruling. So. Oh, that has to be archaic. That's a long. Uh, oh, okay. That is. Um. So yeah. Once again. <laughs> Court system, at, court system at work. Uh, but uh, does anyone have any other stories before we continue with the docket we have? I wish I could uh, input, but I've been traveling too much. <laughs> My bad. That's fine. Um, so continuing with some kind of stupid stories in the world. Um, uh, here we go. Indian chief ministers tone death comment about women's ripped jean triggers global protest. So, yeah, apparently if you're a woman and you wear ripped jeans, you are you are setting a bad example for children. Women, you're bad. Stop really? wearing jeans. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yep, totally. <laughs> you know, Bruh. how many leggings they wear and they're all ripped up from playing? Hey, okay. that is wrong. You're setting a bad example for the kids. Put no, those... that's the kids. Those Burner the kids at the wearing, stake. You know... <laughs> exactly. You're, you're setting a bad example. You should be wearing um, fully... Oh, what the fuck is normal then? Slack jeans or... Uh, long... No, no. What, what were those old, like, long dresses called? Uh, a dress? No, there's Are a... Are you talking about weird... sundresses? Yeah, sundresses. There you go. There's a short though, usually because sundresses, sundresses can be long or short. I think they were typically short. Yeah, um, it's typical for spring and summer that, kind of theme. What's that weird, like poofy one? A ball gown? Is it a ball gown? I don't know what the fuck you're thinking of at this point. The one, <laughs> the one that, the one that you, the, a woman looks like a bell if you think about it. Oh like, yeah, then a ball gown then. Are you talking yeah. about a Victorian era ball gown? There you go. Everyone should start wearing that. No one should be able to be within a woman within hey, you know, uh, you can three make those feet. It's really big, and then it'll be six feet apart from everybody. <laughs> exactly. So everyone. This Wait, does that right. mean I can't wear my I can't wear poofy skirts anymore? I also have to wear the dress because I don't look good in a dress. I'd rather just wear the poofy skirt. There you, you go. Can wear just a poofy skirt. You can wear whatever top on the top. I don't care. Oh, you're right. I'm a I'm a man. I can wear whatever I want. Women, though, how dare? I know. Bruh. Show the 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 feeding bags off. <laughs> but yeah, it's a uh, it yeah it was it was just crazy. It just uh because uh after after this whole incident happened uh with the thing, then people just started showing photos with them in ripped jeans and stuff like that, and it's just I don't know. It's just fucking stupid. It's like there there there's a there is a point for some. Some inappropriate clothing, but ripped jeans is that really going that far? I mean, obviously, I that's way... where we need to draw the line. I mean, it's definitely not whenever women are walking around in a tube top that barely cover, covers their nipples and a thong, you know, it can't show those knees. <laughs> no, I, the, well, how about I some I, of the I... shorts that some of them wear and they're like. You, you can see like the hoochie or their ass coming out of those shorts and go, yeah. The shorty well, shorts. Here's, here's the question: Are their knees showing? 
No, 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 not right. knees. I don't want to see. I don't want to see ankles. No ankles. Yeah, no. Basically, care. as long as they wear knee pads, they can wear whatever they want. That's what I'm getting out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Volleyball knee pads. All right. Yep. <laughs> as long as they have those on, they're fine. There you go. There you go. I don't know. It's just fucking stupid. Like, yeah, because because he's quoted in saying showing bare knees, wearing ripped denim, and looking like rich kids. I. <sighs> We're okay. all rich kids. Now I'm bitches. confused. How the fuck are ripped jeans looking like a rich kid? That's not the image I have when I think of rich kids. Like what? So my question is, when did because that, that was a trend for a while in the late nineties, right? The the ripped yeah, jeans. Yeah, late nineties. Late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah, that was like the style. Margarita. And then um and then it kind of um. Kind of died down. It it, it kind of died down a little bit, but it's coming back a little bit. Uh, I think the, what was the after that? Wasn't it like those uh, bleach jeans or kind of those uh, weird like stonewashed? There you go. Thank you. Yeah, that was a thing for a while. Uh, Why do I know I, that? I, <laughs> I don't know. I haven't thought about. I've haven't seen stonewashed jeans anywhere since like fucking middle school. Bro. Oh, things are coming back into place. I've seen some '90s stuff, and I'm like, oh my god! It's Does that mean back. Scene Girls will come back? Which one? Scene. Uh, I don't know how to elaborate. Describe it. I mm. I don't know how. To, uh. So you know the girls who would wear like the really they dye their head really bright colors while still also dressing kind of gothic. Oh, there's a oh, name okay. for that. I know what you're talking about. I yeah, I scene. punk rock. Okay. No, there they have they have their own. They don't like being called punk rock. There's a, there's a name for that type of like goth style. It's like a it's like a vibrant kind of name. Um, well, I know I know what you're thinking. Of. Emo. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I know I know what you're thinking of in terms of the goth thing. It's not part of the goth uh, culture. Uh, okay. God damn it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Like, because what you're thinking of is, um, it's pastel goth, which is oh a yeah, so totally different thing. Yeah, totally so, different. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. One of my friends on Instagram, she's kind of yeah that pastel goth, um, and she she puts on the um, she has like that goth look, but then she kind of has sometimes she half her other wardrobe turns out to be like kind of these like more like uh colorful uh bright and pastel colors that which is a little bit uh derivative from what her normal what i would have thought her normal style would have been uh so yeah. I, I just sent you an image of what scene looks like uh i did that oh yeah okay yeah, uh, i should have so, put that in the uh, podcast chat I fine. would have, but I can't put pictures in there. Uh, you could have put it in uh, guest room too. Uh, or talking points. But anyways, um, continuing on to some of the crazy sh shenanigans, um. Actually, there, there's a couple things that I uh, that here. So uh, we made it a little bit slow. Okay, here we go. Like one of the crazy things that I've been noticing uh, that popped out of nowhere during my times on Twitter is there was an article for what non-Americans are sharing. There uh, are sharing the things that thought were fake about America that turned out to be true. And I've seen something similar to that. When you posted that, I've seen a lot of those um, BuzzFeed things. I think it's really interesting because it, it is definitely weird, you know? Some of the stuff they say, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't think about it. So, so yeah, let's, uh, let's go one by one and think, like, huh. Because for us, that would be the norm, really. Well, I've been to Europe. Well, you know, when I was in my teens, um, and I thought it was pretty interesting, you know. But you know, for me being sixteen at the time, it's 
more cost effective to drink a beer than it is to drink a soda. But what here? Here's my question: Is though when when you went to Europe, did you already have a preconce pre preconceived idea of what Europe ha uh, felt like in your head from other from other uh, like uh, TV shows, movies, and things like that? Not really. I didn't even preconceived notion, so I kind of went in with an open mind and kind of an open idea of what it was gonna you know be like, and I. Thought it was pretty interesting for that time frame. I mean, we didn't, you know, everything wasn't like so crazy big like America has it, and portion sizes are smaller, but you always felt full after it, and your food was much more healthier than what you were getting at home. So that's for sure. They have higher standards than we do. That is true. That is true. So let's go going down this list. Let's see here. Number one. Surfer dudes actually talk like that. Whoa, <laughs> dude. Dead. Like, did you catch that right? <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is one of those things where you have this notion where the classic kind of because you have some some stereotypes like the like the surfer dude or the skater kid. Um, but Remember, yeah, kids, uh... you heard it here first. Jesus said sometimes stereotypes are true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My theory <laughs> agreed upon. Um, but yeah, it's a bad. Yeah, it's crazy. But no, it's true. You know. <laughs> It's the culture around it. That's what's interesting, though. It's like that's where what kind of evolves that. It's like the surf, the surf, the surfer culture, and how they it, it is, and it just continues. It's just a, like an echo chamber of that. So yeah, now continuing on, number two, drink sizes. So uh, here's the quote: When my family visited in 2017, we landed in Texas for a stopover. First thing I saw in the shop part of the terminal was a dude who was drinking from what looked like an actual bucket. Here in New Zealand, our large drinks would be considered an American small or medium. Yeah, I've heard that. My French teacher in high school, she said, what would be considered a large meal at McDonald's in France is what we would consider a small to a medium. Bruh. And I was just like, sizes. damn, no wonder you're so skinny. But the portion sizes and the, what they actually make the food is natural and better for you. Yeah, yeah they, they have, have a lot. lot. Who, want, who wants food that's good for you? <laughs> that's not why you eat food. You eat food because it tastes good. And look <laughs> at that shit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's uh, they do have... your. your most European countries have a stricter regulation of all their additives that they have in their foods are almost like no additives at all. Wow. No wonder they keep losing the wars. <laughs> uh, all right, continuing on with number three. Yellow school buses are actually a thing in America, and I honestly thought it was a cartoon thing, but no. It never thought about that. Yeah, never I never thought about had that. I thought in my mind about how our school buses are yellow and other places might not do that. And also, most parents are able to drop their kids off to school because work schedules allow them to do so. They're a parent friendly kind of world, and we are against the average parent, so a single parent too. So We're not I against can believe it. a I can parent, believe it. we're just pro money. Yeah. And you but, know, well, if. You having a kid gets in the way of the company making money, then obviously you don't belong in that company. <laughs> Bruh. Remember, you work for the company. They need their... Yeah, they say do. And if you're uh -huh. not going to give it to them, they'll get it from someone else. Exactly. Yep, that's true. All right, continuing on with number four. Sports bars are actually exactly how they are portrayed on television. Uh, yeah. for the most part, I, for the most part, I would agree on that one. Uh, I'd say it depends on, on. I'd say it depends on the sports bar. Yeah, exactly. But for the most part, I would I would agree on it. For I would say, 
three out of five sports bars. Actually, thinking about it, I don't think I can give an accurate opinion on it because I purposely don't go to bars, and I've definitely never been in a sports. And I've never been to a sports bar when there's games on. No, I I don't like the idea of bars. Why am I going to go out to go buy overpriced alcohol when I can just open up my freezer, pull out a bottle of whiskey, and then I don't and then I don't have to leave anywhere. And I don't have to worry about driving home. I heard about those drive throughs. My brother was telling me about that when he was stationed in Texas. You yes and no. There's there's some there's some places that have dry. There are some drive through liquor stores that exist where you pull up to the window, you order your alcohol because you already know you what you want or you've called head whatever, and then you take it and you leave. But even still, like I have a bottle of whiskey in my freezer. Why am I gonna go out and pay five bucks a shot when I could just start pouring glasses now and I don't have to drive home later? True. That was always been my theory and my philosophy. Exactly. I, I think that... No, continue. I was just saying, that's what I got. I got all that bar experience out of my life and when I was 21 and then kind of like, okay, so we, I, I did it. I did it. I've, I can say I've done it. So, For the most part, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm in the for me, I'm, I'm in the opinion that I only go out to a bar if it's kind of a social thing. If there's a group of uh, friends gathering together for uh, some time, Besides that, no, it's like you said, it's a, it's a lot cheaper to just have it at home and just get. Uh, the only thing that you'd really get at a bar is kind of that atmosphere and stuff like that, depending on if you're going to like a a kind of like karaoke bar, a sports bar, a dance bar, kind of depending on a discotheque, things like that. I mean, um, I've, I've been to bars before, but half of the time I was going was simply because a girl I was trying to get with was going and I was like, yeah, sure, I'll join you. <laughs> yeah, I tried. Didn't work. Yeah. My name is Jeff. Honesty is best. <laughs> okay. Um, continuing on. Number five. Uh, Dolly Parton has her own theme park in Tennessee. See, this was news to me. I had no idea. I didn't know this right, either. You I live didn't... near Tennessee. I was in Tennessee, what, two years ago? I don't but live near Tennessee. You're in Texas? Texas is not near Tennessee. <laughs> oh! I know, but you're closer to it state-wise than we are from Oregon. Yeah, and like half of the journey that half of the drive you would make from where you are to get there is how long it would take me to get there because of how long I'd have to go through Texas. I know. I'm aware of it. Hey, my dog I'm, came out of Texas in two days. He was out of, in here in two days. <laughs> I was. Came, I'm in South Texas, so it would take me even longer ooh. to go north. <laughs> Damn. All right, but yeah, I did. Uh, for one, going back, it, I I didn't really think like she had her own world or what it is. I didn't really look it up, but congratulations to Dolly Parton for having her own theme park. Yeah, it must uh, be nice. Um, like, <laughs> hey, she was one of the. Uh, she's actually, I actually look up to her as a cool person because I think what she did with her life and with her fame and fortune, um, doing books for young uh, babies. She, they actually do it for five years. They will send a book, um, a, one a month, to the mm-hmm. kid so they always learn how to read early in life. And it's just, I thought it was really cool. And then on second, uh, she was a, a top supporter for the COVID vaccines. She would donate millions of money, lots of money to it. So I thought it, she's pretty cool. I think she's pretty rad for who she is. So I'm about a 18 hour drive nonstop to Dollywood. <laughs> All right. Let's see what it is for me. Hmm. As, we, as you guys calculate the distance, let's continue on with number six. Um, this one's a weird one. Uh, US, I'm going to just quote US. US schools have a ton of ex. Extracurricular activities, clubs, including basketball, football, swimming, cheerleaders, chess, and more. Mine's a day and 14 hours. Okay, 14 hours, 16 hours. So we're closer. 24 hours. So that's almost two days right there. Yeah. Ah, But it seems it may... Okay, continuing with number six, um, it makes... It makes it sound like the other countries think that we have nothing in our schooling system. That's sad. That really does make it sad. I mean...
whenever I was going through school, the only quote unquote extracurricular activities the school I graduated from even really offered was sports and cheerleading. Like they huh. barely had a band. They barely, they didn't have chess teams or anything like that. They didn't have well, the. Well, and ag. Yeah, the FFA was also really big at the school I was in. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm but, thinking about it. I'm trying to think about it for a second. Because I went to two different high schools. Same. Uh, my the first one I went to had everything. Okay. Like, if you, then, if you could think of an extracurricular activity, the first high school I went to had it. Go home club. Yeah, I was a part of that one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's, it, I, it just doesn't, because yeah, it's what, because when, like from most of this stuff, you get a perception, it's probably people from, from people like watching our, uh, American television and stuff like that. And you always see that in, in TV shows and things like that. Oh yeah. They're going to a basketball game in high school or stuff like that. Uh, and everything because there's like probably like hundreds at this point of TV shows where either there's a basketball, football, chess, or anything for God's sakes out there. Uh, yeah, but in my head, it's like I said, we we are American, so it is the norm for us. But it's kind of like sad to think like, oh, people think that we don't we don't have these things. Like, okay, sure, sad times, you know, sad times. <laughs> Well, I think what the article is saying is they didn't, like, they didn't think it was, is this one true. saying that they don't? They don't believe it's true. Oh. Uh, yeah. Because let's go with number seven. You can buy milk in gallon size containers. Uh, here's the quote that they have. When I visited America, I went to a supermarket for some breakfast stuff, cereal and milk. All they had was milk in gallons. Oops could possibly want that much milk. I asked for a smaller carton, and the lady who worked there just laughed at me and asked, don't you like milk in England? Ah, subtle racism. Don't you just love it? And look at that shit. I, th- I, I can kind of see it, because, you know, they are like, oh, they, they don't get milk gallons. They get, like, what, pint size, I think it's? They don't get it so big they, ones. They get, they get uh, I think, in like liters, like a liter to two liters, which is way smaller than a gallon. And yeah. I, think it's going, I think it's going back to the portion size, going back to that discussion. But also, because like, we, they buy groceries, like, from what I understand is they buy groceries as they need them. Unlike here, it's like, oh, well, you never know. We might need this gallon of milk with during, like, the two weeks it's good. Maybe, depending on how well your fridge is. <laughs> you know, I, I got that double door fridge. But that's also part of the reason why I started buying a lot of lactose-free milk is because it takes like three months before it goes bad. Oh, oh that's cool. Okay. That's cool. Well, yeah. You can if you buy it this month, it probably won't go expire until like June. That's cool. Uh, I buy the insulated, uh, the half half gallon for my daughter, um, because it doesn't get exposed to light. The longer it doesn't get exposed to light, the longer it lasts. So never heard that one like... before. You yeah. never heard that one? No, uh, I've never uh, heard of that. Never yeah. heard of that. I'm also That's... not a huge milk drinker, so I don't really know the subtleties on how to keep milk fresh. I don't drink milk milk myself, but my daughter does, and I'm lactose intolerant, so I can't even do it. So I I read up that uh, interesting thing. I was like, "Oh, that makes sense. Why it goes bad so fast?" You know, um, because it's it's getting light. Because of the clear container, you can see it. But when you get those half cartons and you can't see because it's made of cardboard, they're not seeing light. It doesn't go bad as fast. Hmm. So, okay. yeah, I thought it was very interesting when I read that a while ago, and I was like, "Oh, that's cool. Good to know." All right, good to know. Uh, Let's continue on. Number eight. In the U.S. states, some criminals can't vote even while on parole. This is an interesting one, mostly because we just had finished our election a couple months ago. Uh, And I know it was like a huge topic during that time and Uh, trying to see and all that. And I, that one's like, okay. The the way we treat our quote unquote criminals is a whole different subject. (laughs) <laughs> um but yeah for 
but it's Bruh. it's not like they can't vote ever again. I'm sure with some offenses that, that's how it is. But like, there's a good period of time where they're not allowed to vote. They're not allowed to like leave the area. Like they have to stay within where they're at for so long, and then they're allowed. All right, cool. Now you can leave the state. Okay, here now you can vote. And in some federal cases, which I know most Europeans don't care about this, a lot of federal offenses, once you get charged for, you can't even go out and – there can't be a gun in your house, whether it was violent or nonviolent for a lot of federal ones. Yep. Yeah. So if you get busted for an ounce of pot, there's a good chance that you could never be allowed to touch a gun ever again. Nope. Everyone who's been arrested, you know what? You lose all human rights. Don't deserve any of them. That's my point. That that's uh, actually uh, a lot of stuff that's going on with the federal with the prison system. That's part of a lot of the issues is they essentially strip away their rights and it is legal slavery. Damn, I was joking. Like but... it, it's actually like in the there's ways that it's defined in there that literally makes it legal slavery. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, they pay you what, like sixteen cents for every little thing you do an hour? Uh I think it's like a dollar a day is what prisoners quote unquote make. Or something yeah. like that. So that's what you could do right. for like sixteen dollars. So that way then like hour. it's like, hey, look, we're you know, they're still getting some money even though it means nothing and but again, our criminal systems It's messed up. Yeah, that's that's a whole different topic. <laughs> There's no reason right. we're not gonna, we're not going to start going down that rabbit hole. All right, let's continue on with some more fun topics. <clears throat> let's uh let's bring this back a little bit. Cereal. Yes, number nine. You have a whole aisle in your supermarket dedicated to just cereal. Yeah, this I never true. once thought that. I never thought this was weird. Never once. I never went to a grocery store while I was in. Europe. We went to a bread store that was like around the corner from us. We got like it was small market, but we never went to a soup like a superstore, like a store that had like everything in there. I was just like, you went to like little place, little shops, and got stuff. So yeah, it's just um, <laughs> it's just normal for us. Yeah, I just um, I never thought about it. It's just like okay, uh, it's like now oh cool, I want to go to cereal. Time to go to the cereal aisle. <laughs> So yeah, hot cereal, <laughs> cold cereal, <laughs> granola, sugar cereal, bland cereal. What shape of Kellogg, cereal? You want circles? Cereal. <laughs> uh, do you want what, is it, what kind of flavor of Cheerios do you want? Of all eight of them? Yeah, because the cereal market's kind of a scam. I don't yeah. eat cereal, so. <laughs> I have a box in my pantry that's probably stale by now. <laughs> Ursula has like probably two or three and she had not finished them and we've had them for probably about a year now oh yeah I'll still <laughs> eat stale cereal right. like I don't care it's food I need to eat it every is. now and again alright uh, this one's another one uh, number 10 there are security guards in school halls and some schools even have metal detectors at the entrance like the TSA at airports yeah Detroit <laughs> So, for those Chicago? who don't know, the metal detector thing, it's typically in schools that are around the areas of, like, Detroit, Chicago, and and a lot of rougher, quote-unquote, areas of cities where it's a good chance your kid could walk in with a knife and start a fight with some kid. I but agree, because I, I was they in really high school started, that had one. Yeah, they started ramping up the whole metal detector thing after Columbine and Sandy Hook. That's whenever a lot more schools started paying more attention and started implementing them. Hmm. I don't but think I've ever seen it I never, Oregon. I never thought about the security guard thing, um, but in the second high school, actually in both of the high schools I went to, they weren't security guards. They were actual police officers. No, we had police officers in our high school here in uh, here in uh, in our in Oregon. Uh, oh yeah, I, we had security, not security, actual police officers, and in uh, Chicago, we had. A car outside and metal detectors on all the entrances. Yeah, and then the schools oh, I man. went to, they the schools I went to, they had they didn't have rules. They didn't have a rule that said you can't carry a knife. They just said the blade of the knife has to be smaller than your the palm of your hand. 
Interesting. So we were allowed hmm. to carry knives because it's South Texas. And <laughs> what are you going to do? Stop me? <laughs> the fuck? But like, it just, you couldn't have a quote unquote big knife. And, you know, that means the kid with the giant fucking hands who could palm a basketball in the fifth grade could carry whatever the fuck he wanted. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, the palm sizes. Okay. Some yeah. of those guys, they're huge hands. And then they get some people with yeah. little hands. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you got small hands. You just might as well just not carry around a knife. Oh, okay. <laughs> or just don't bring it out. Bruh. True. Um, continuing on, this one, it took me a while to understand what they were talking about in this tweet, but I finally got it. Number 11, you have those angry sinks that chop shit. And I was like, what the heck are they talking about? But they were talking about disposals. I'm like, oh. That's not a normal thing? (laughs) Apparently not. Okay. I was like, wait, Uh, don't. Well, I can kind of see how that is a little weird. Like, I never actually use mine. Same, but I just replaced mine. So Oh god, I feel sorry for your wallet. <laughs> well, my mom did it. I, I don't when she she paid for it with her stimulus check. Hey yo. <laughs> I use my stimulus check to buy Magic the Gathering cards. <laughs> <laughs> Cause uh, I have no self control. <laughs> Yeah, that one just uh, plain and simple. Um, probably not like every uh, country outside has disposals. I think every day now, I think it's becoming more the norm in the the uh, in the states when new houses are being built up and stuff. It's like it's kind of a given at this point. Uh, it's our way of composting food. <laughs> true. Um, okay, this one's an interesting one. Number twelve. Red solo cups are not just Hollywood props. Uh, here's a tweet. When I immigrated to the U.S., my mother-in-law was making dinner and offered me iced tea in a red solo cup. I never, I never cups? once, I never once thought that people thought that red solo cups were fake. Like that's a conspiracy theory I wasn't ready for. Probably. I, uh, I think I read something similar to that, like when solo cups were like they were like, What? That's real? Like that's stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's like it they're just cups. Like don't people don't have styrofoam cups and stuff. I under I understand the meme of what a red solo cup is, right? It's that the party well, yeah. To- yeah. Toby Keith kinda made it clear. But <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that song. Uh how dare you. <laughs> Uh, my name is Jeff. But yeah, it's just I, I, you, I would just think that like people have disposable cups. I would think people are like, oh yeah, this, yeah, unless they're using styrofoam. Which, wait, what? What's more environmentally friendly? I know none of them are, but styrofoam uh, or plastic? I think my plastic question. because it's easier to reuse plastic as opposed to styrofoam. Correct, and then. Because you can't, you can't put uh, styrofoam in a recycling bin, and some plastics technically you can't, but a lot of plastics you still can. It depends okay. on what part of the country, too. No, just saying. Okay. Um, but uh, styrofoam, I always always remember ping pong or beer pong. That's what we used. <laughs> I mean, for the solo cups, or are you still yeah, talking the- about styrofoam cups? No, we used the red solo cups to do the beer pong. We didn't use styrofoam. We never had styrofoam around the solid old. Sorry. No, that's fine. Uh, continue now. Number 13. <laughs> I was like, was that my dog or we held up? <laughs> no, that's my dog being a prick. Mine's been <laughs> lately. Apparently, I'm not giving him enough attention, even though he was just asleep. <laughs> okay, uh, continuing on. Uh, this one's interesting because it deals with a holiday. Uh, number 13, on Halloween, mass people come to your house and knock at your door asking for candy, mostly in just packs of kids, but sometimes whole families. This one makes sense in some sense, because some countries, I understand, don't celebrate Halloween as the Americans do, where 
It's literally a holiday to get candy. It's a yeah, it's very a, it's, it's a capitalist holiday. That's what it is. Exactly. Hey, don't come buy a bunch of candy to go give a bunch of people that had to give us money for costumes. So yeah. that one that makes perfect sense. Why why it would make sense for anyone who's watching a Halloween movie like what? That's a thing. Not just a money I, thing. I never had a thought that other people celebrate Halloween differently, other than what? just ignoring people as they come through and pass doors. Ah, uh, so you either were don't celebrate Halloween, or you do celebrate I, Halloween. I just kind of, I kind of celebrate it somewhat, depending on who I'm around. But most of the time, I just ignore people and if someone knocks on my door i refuse to answer it on halloween okay you don't have your lights on do you no but sometimes <laughs> people don't care no. <laughs> the way the way my house is when people come around it's that's funny light on means knock on door we have candy and i continually tell my mom just put a sign out that just says fuck off <laughs> but she refuses to she loves handing out candy that's res- that's uh, that's respectable. All right, continuing on. I think we talked about this a little bit uh, earlier. In the sense, the minimal number of paid days off you work at work. So a friend of mine from Wisconsin was a proud that he got twenty days off per year. If someone in Germany offered me only twenty days off, I would laugh at them and leave. Yeah, that's true. They get more holidays and paid time off and. I think the and funniest yeah. thing about that is um, if you're in the military, you get about 30 days off a year paid. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, about. It's like two and a half a month, which I think equates to like 30. So uh, I wonder if, can you look up how much like every country roughly gives their, uh, the average employee days off? Because it, 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 it is. I, th- I think it kind of varies because then there's also sick days, there's personal days, ah, there's. Okay. Because, you know, all because, kind of different shit. It, it okay. varies, but I mean, my mom has a friend who he physically can't go to work. He can only work from home, which worked out with COVID because he has a bunch of issues and he has to keep um, doing medical stuff with himself. And his company was like, yeah, sure. Here you go. You can keep working from us. You'll just work from home. Okay. And then uh, right before COVID happened, they're like, if you can come in, cool. If you can't, don't worry about it. Wow. Okay. Interesting. He, he got one of the good companies. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the rare few in, that exist. Um, not good for them, though. Uh, this The next one is really baffling me. The next one is a load of bullshit. That's what it is. Ready? <laughs> Ready? Let's a uh, little bit of a drum roll. Americans are nice and will stop to talk to strangers. That only applies in the deep south, like Georgia, Alabama areas, and some parts of Texas. If someone just ran, if some stranger randomly starts talking to me, I'm a, my fight or flight's kicking in. I'm ready to throw hands. I don't give a fuck. Don't talk to me. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just, it's just weird. I, 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 I rarely would talk to strangers outside of, probably a setting where it's already an established uh group or like organization like kind of like a work thing or a school a conference Uh, you know shit where you're everyone's there for the same reason no question about it but not just some rander passerby i'm walking by and just like just make our way and i say hey random changer how's it going they'll just look at you like the fuck are you what do you want yeah don't don't randomly talk to me. Don't do that. I don't know you. Leave me alone. <laughs> I don't know. For me, I don't know. For me, being scared, you know, traveling, it's just like, it's a normal thing for me. Just randomly talking to people all the time. <laughs> you're, the kind of per- you're the kind of person on a plane I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't talk to people on the plane. You know, That's mom, good. we usually with my family or my daughter, and it's like, we're just in a road against each other, so we don't talk much, so. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Um, yeah. the next one, the next one I super agree on. American kids eat straight sugar. Uh, I agree. Yeah, still do, and probably will 
uh, they're, they're making a, 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 a comment on pixie sticks. I so, found those things like they were nothing. That's because it's cocaine for children, basically. <laughs> true, true. Bruh. So true. Yeah, it's a, that's a, once again the, another American thing. Like we have sugar in almost every. Yeah. Like, if you thing. don't know what pixie sticks are, it is basically here, kids, take this sugar and eat it through a straw. That's it. It is literally just a bunch of powdered sugar shit, sometimes different colors, put into a giant straw that they crimp shut. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think that we can uh, change that, because we we also already established that the European uh, ways are a lot more into their natural stuff, so... Um, so, continuing on with number 17. The Honking. I thought it was a movie stereotype, and then I went to New York. Yeah, it's one of... <laughs> Yeah, I, I personally don't honk that often, unless someone's literally about to, like, almost hit, crash into me. Uh, besides that, I'm personally not a big honker, uh, but I would understand places like big cities and stuff like that. I think the only time I ever honk my horn is whenever I'm outside someone's house telling them to hurry the fuck up. <laughs> I don't think I do that either. I don't do that. Like, I'm I'm the guy who sits in front of the person's driveway just blaring their horn, pissing off the neighbors because my buddy's not moving fast enough. Bruh. <laughs> in case yeah. people haven't figured it out, I'm kind of an asshole. <laughs> I can I sense that. That shit. <laughs> No comment, Liz. No, I don't. I'm not a honker myself. I, even though I almost got hit when I was in Seattle, we had the green light for the left, and this guy just said it was gonna go. Bruh. Like, what the fuck? I was just gonna look at him like I'm trying to drive. I'm like watching him at the same time. Like here I am with a full load of people. <laughs> Damn. Scary. I, mean, I I never honk at other people while I'm driving, but I'm the kind. I'm the guy who if I'm at a red light. The light, as soon as it turns green, if someone behind me honks, I'm putting my truck in park, and I'm going to sit there and just okay. wait and piss off everybody. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, not... I've, I've done that where people are just are not even paying attention. I've, I've honked and be like, uh, hello, it's green. It's been like a green for a minute. Hello. Well, so so if, if, it's, if I'm sitting there because I'm not paying attention, that's a completely different story. But if it's like it just turned green and you haven't given me like two seconds – that's whenever I yeah. start being an asshole. Yeah, I totally. Huh? I can, I get it from that perspective, but like, yeah, like I've had people where I, I literally see them looking down at their phone. I'm like looking at the thing. I'm like, it's green. Hello, Hong Kong. Wake up. <laughs> uh, get off your damn phone. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, continuing on with number eighteen. Your country is huge. I got off the plane and asked the guy, cab guy how far the hotel was. He said about 30 minutes, and I almost had a heart attack. That's 30, 30 miles. miles. Oh, shit, 30 I'm miles? Read again. Yep. <laughs> 30 minutes is, like, down the road. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, yeah. right? 30 miles, 30 yeah. 30 miles that... is about 30 minutes. Yeah, it's about the same thing. It's a four no, different. but unless you're in a big city, True. 30 I miles can Orlando, be... And... 30 miles is across town. <laughs> yeah, it's it's oh, literally, yeah. like, for me, from one side of San Antonio to the other is about 25 to 30 miles. Okay. Which, um, for the Depending most part... Depending on where you draw that line at. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Jesus. You and I are, like, 30 miles away, but, you know, it takes me 45 minutes to get there because of all the lights. True. It is one of those things that you really have to take into perspective is, like, the U.S. is literally one giant country with small states, and even those small states can be their own little countries. Hey, how's it going? Uh, <laughs> Texas speaking. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it always baffles my mind when it comes to Europe. It's like, oh yeah, I just I drove I drove like thirty minutes, and I went to like two different countries just through two different countries just to go to Burger King. It's like I drove thirty minutes down the road, and I'm still on the same fucking street. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm still waiting on the next red light. What the fuck? Um, yeah. Uh, let's go with this next interesting, fun one: free soft drink refills in restaurants, aka soda. 
Yes, or, or, or pop, brothers. Depending pop. how you look at it. Yeah. Well, no, no. Pop's oh, come wrong. on, Manny. Manny called you out last time on that. No, no. Pop's wrong. Oh, oh wait. Um, I don't have a. Uh, I should have clipped the, the sound of a can opening. I'm gonna clip that next time. That's okay. Just let me know. I'll probably crack one in a little bit. <laughs> I already but had yeah, a hard tail, sir. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm with my G fuel right now, I'm trying to keep myself awake. But yeah, it's it's true. Um, it is one of those things where it's kind of the norm when you're just buying like a soft drink or water. It's just free refills, unless you're buying like a, a yeah or tea. Um, and like, don't other places around the world get free refills? Okay, I cannot imagine having to pay for a new drink every single time they refill my cup. I would yeah. be fucking furious. Because I'll through a meal, I'll go through like three of them. I think this goes back to portion size again. Like I don't give whatever. a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, and a soda is much more costly over there than it is a beer. Oh, yeah. So you might want to buy a beer. <laughs> uh, continuing. Um, this one's a uh, pretty uh, like I thought. This is kind of uh, not universal, but at least a couple of country. You can get into a university just by being good at sports. Yeah. Um, that, that was universal throughout the world. I thought that was kind of a norm. So it, it kind of is. Um, like taking Japan for an example, colleges all have entrance exams. And I think depending on what you're going to college for, I'm probably wrong on this, but I think depending like and for each college, the like what you need to pass is different. And then I'm assuming if you're going into different programs, it's slightly different. Like, hey, I want to be like someone who's going to to school to be a doctor versus someone who's going to be a teacher. I wouldn't expect them to have the same exam. But I wouldn't think so thing either. But here in America, it doesn't matter how smart you are. If you can throw a ball really far and really fast, then you can do whatever the fuck you want. Exactly, um, and pay somebody to pay. Do your exams for you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, some places they some places they'll be like, ah nah, you're on the football team, you're fine. Exactly. Uh continue And on I love how there. they used a picture of soccer for this one as opposed to like football or basketball, you know. It's a sport it's that we actually it's a football. Sport, a sport that it's... we actually play in this country. <laughs> Uh, that's true. Unless you uh, come to the Portland Northwest and you uh, see soccer stadiums yeah, instead not, of a We're not talking about Narnia. We're talking about the actual country. <laughs> Bruh. Okay. Uh, continuing staying, staying on the topic of education, actually, that the higher education costs up to, up to, uh, upwards of $50,000 per year. I, I saw you skip one. I'm yeah. No, I, that's fine. I see what you're not. I see what you're not talking no, about. I'll go back. I'll go back to that one. But it's uh staying within the same um, yeah, like the that, same like yeah. topic. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's one of those things. Like yeah, it's you're literally putting yourself into debt if you want to get into uh, a higher education. Unless you want to serve, if serve and be your government's bitch for about four years, then you can get three years of free education. Bruh. Four if you live in Texas. Really? <laughs> yeah, because we have what's called the Hazelwood Act, which it takes the benefits you get from the GI Bill, and it just gives you a whole nother year of it. Interesting. Yeah. Texas loves its veterans. If you're a veteran <laughs> and you're looking for a place to move just solely off of the benefits that it gives you, Texas is one of the best ones. Okay. Most Partially because of the Hazelwood Act, but also like... I got my license to carry from a veteran. I got like half of my teachers are veterans or veteran affiliated. Most businesses are veteran friendly. Some places, it, it, I think it's a law in Texas where if you're a veteran, you jump straight to the top of the list no matter where you're applying to for a job. Oh, That's okay. pretty cool. Like know. just being I, a veteran. Okay, wow. Uh, interesting note. I did not know that. Uh, yep. To so any veterans seems like Texas is a place to be. Uh, going back because I did skip one because um the the two I wish they I wish they switched it because it, it would have been a little bit flowed a little bit better. Yeah, but it's uh, Buzzfeed. They it. don't give a shit. True. Anyways, continue on. the The next one is uh or the one previous was nearly every man is criticized regardless of religion. I wonder if they're just talking. 
Uh, oh, circumcised. Wait, circumcised? Yep. Yeah, guys, dude. Wait, why can't I say? Oh man, I need my glasses. Give me that. I'm gonna put on my glasses. I just assumed <laughs> that you skipped it because you didn't want to talk about circumcised and uncircumcised penises. No, no, because we have a we have a topic. Oh man, you know what? I should have sk- I should have skipped it until the end. <laughs> you know, wait, what's the last topic? Americans Fuck, Ameri- are good at making a pie. Fuck pies. Going back to circumcised. <laughs> That's a better transition. You heard it here first. Jesus prefers penises over pies. Bruh. American Horror Pie, the movie. <laughs> oh, you're right. That is That also works. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> because our final, like our final discussion point, because we're getting towards the end of our thing. Yeah, we're getting towards the end of our uh, discussion here. Uh, apparently, uh, our human penises are shrinking because of pollution, warned scientists. I don't so know. I've, much I've spent so much that, time but... digging through this article. I found zero evidence of what the fuck they're talking about. They didn't provide any sources. I don't know where they're getting this information from. They don't need to scare me like this. So, <laughs> so, Bruh. okay. So this is kind of the head, like the head story, the head law line. Dr. Shauna Swan, so you can blame her, has Bitch. found that that c- chemicals called fuck can't read. No, uh, it's not called fatal fuck. <laughs> fatal eight. 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 Penis shrinkage. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, are causing human babies to be born with malformed genitals. Um, I'm guessing this kind of more revol- revolves around areas that do have really high pollutions, where it kind of does affect people's um, basically the air they're breathing. I because that is something. Or the that... water they drink, like Flint, Michigan. Yeah, I oh. think it just yeah basically yeah anything that it involves the environment anything you're drinking the air you're breathing can pro- affect the how the fetus grows and develops in a own body so that does kind of it makes sense in in, in that but i'm just upset because i was i was really looking forward to kind of going down this rabbit hole to figure out where the fuck this information is coming from um, but, but they provide zero sources, which, hey, if anyone's ever looking into information that claims scientists are saying anything, look for the sources. True, because what they're saying uh, is uh, uh, the, what, what is it called? The bla, bla, penis shrinkage chemical uh, mimics the hormone estrogen. Yeah. Bleh, bleh. I'm uh, impressed and... you pronounced estrogen correctly. <laughs> I can read. I speak English. Can you? Uh, let me think about it for a second. Yes, yes, I can. Um, but anyways, um, uh, it uh, now I lost my spot. Yeah, it mimics the hormone estrogen and thus dis- uh, disturbs the natural production of hormones in the human body which researchers have linked to interference in sexual development in infants and behaviors in adults. So what was that uh, about you being able to read? <laughs> you know, there's, there's a time where I could read at an 8th grade level, but now I can only read on a 7th grade level. Shit, I'm over here struggling at a fourth grade. What the fuck? Bruh. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, it's um uh, I'm guessing you read most of the article, but yeah, it is one of those things where it's still uh it was a study published back in 2017 and it's barely it, it's one of these things that you have to kind of do a very long term and have a very large group of of um uh, what the fuck is it? It's not case, specimens. Case studies. Uh, case studies. And uh, but for the most part, the the basis makes sense. Environment does affect how. Uh, yeah, it's just these I, are... since You're they just didn't include, since they didn't include any sources, I'm feeling a lot of this is more correlation as opposed to causation. So it's just really yeah they co- yeah they're biased? both happening at the same time, but 
they that doesn't necessarily mean that they're linked because there's so many different things that go into like what can affect someone's fertility so many different things yeah the environment so, is somewhat up there on the top list Dude, yeah but like think about it what you eat hot showers eat. can affect it you know what you're eating and drinking affects it it's water, it's a very hard thing to fly. pinpoint like hey this is affecting people's fertility i guess True. when 2040 uh what is it 2045 yeah says that well we'll see like no, uh, next to no kids basically is a blow sperm count i'll wait and oh, see that no not the yeah, what, 20 years? <laughs> what really yeah it said by 20 uh, they're predicting by 2045 that fertility rates will be so low to where we might see a dip in childbirths like actually significantly. shoot there oh my god i completely forgot this one article um what is it apparently um fuck what was it apparently the 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 age gap of people who are still virgins have been increasing in the past uh 15 to 20 years uh just to do just due to societal standards so people are are now not having sex as early good and, yeah i don't need any more teenage pregnancies <laughs> uh but yeah yeah it's a uh, yeah it, it's in the last um back in um uh, in uh early early 90s uh it was estimated that uh males uh one out of 10 under the age of uh 24 for virgins and back in 2018 that has changed to uh uh one out of four <laughs> fucking nerds <laughs> bruh but yeah, it's gone from a a a, a ten percent to a twenty five percent, and it's estimated to just climb. I mean, I'm not I'm not gonna lie, I'm not surprised, simply because a lot of people are starting to realize, hey, kids are expensive. We can't afford them. Why are we gonna fuck? No, yeah, I, th I think we've had uh, we've had this discussion before. It is a uh. uh it is one of those things that uh, you really have to take into consideration because a lot of people are mostly now in this pandemic era. Uh, people have noted like, yeah, it's not easy to survive in situations like this. And um, I mean, I'm not, yeah. I, I got I lost mine out of just pure fucking luck. Like I should not have lost if I'd stayed at the first high school I went to, I probably wouldn't have lost it until after high school. So yeah, so, so it makes sense. Um, the the uh the birth rate drop, yeah, that's what we were saying. And it's going uh down and down to, and a lot of other countries as well are. Uh, well, good. We don't really... need as many people on this planet. There's too goddamn many of them. And that's why COVID but... happened. Got to kill them off. <laughs> exactly. Fuck those old people. It's like the plague when we lost like a third of people. <laughs> yeah, every hundred every hundred years or so, there's a plague. Bro. Okay, so is there anything else you guys want to finish talking before we end uh, this episode? No. Uh, I don't think I have anything else. No. Okay. I don't. Um. Think. So, so yeah, we, we we've talked a lot. There's a lot of things that we didn't know, we learned, and uh, we once again found out that the world is pretty fucking stupid. <laughs> And, and Hollywood <laughs> is a real place. <laughs> so yeah, uh, once again, guys, thank you for joining me. Uh, let's see what the internet brings or what the world brings us in the in the next two weeks. Uh, I don't want to know. <laughs> I, I don't want to know. <laughs> so yeah, everyone, thank you for listening to another episode, and uh, look forward to what uh, comes. Uh, we'll see what other adventures we might encounter. Um, so Liz Bolton, uh, buy our merch. Next time. <laughs> I don't know if we have merch. I just felt Not like yet. we don't merch. have we don't have we don't have merch yet. 
That's actually, no, we, we do have merch. We actually Holy do have shit. merch. We actually do have merch. I but just felt like have... being an asshole and saying buy our merch. I didn't think there was any actual merch. No, we okay. So I always forget we are part of the BS Podcast Network, and you can buy a T-shirt through them. Uh, we get a very like very small portion, but we do have a very very really interesting design that I created two Holy years shit. ago. We've Why have I not the... seen this merch? God damn it. Uh, I'll show, I'll send the link. But yeah, we do have an actual because we have two t-shirts technically. We have ours that I posted like three years ago. And then there's an exclusive BS Podcast Network uh one fuck? for their thing. Uh but yeah. So if anyone actually wants to go buy it, I'll link it below. It is a really sick looking shirt. Um oh, look uh, at it. Send me the link. Yeah. I'm oh, upset I didn't know that there was actual merch. I could have been doing this every time I was on. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, if you guys want merch, there you go. Uh, if you guys want merch design, we can figure that out. Like, there's some cool shit that we can do. Uh, I'll make that, the, I'll make the dumbest shit if you if people will buy it. <laughs> <laughs> there you guys go. Uh, so let us know. Thank you for listening. So until next week. See ya. Bye. Bye.